As a kid, Dwayne Haskins was obsessed with the game of football. And at the tender age of 10 years old, dude called this shot. Dwayne, yeah. what you think? This is awesome. I'm going to awesome. college here. You going to college here? <laughs> Back then, he was passionate about the game. Stories of his attention to detail as a kid echo throughout his journey, and tales of that obsession would reverberate through the hallways of his former high school. Years later, when Dwayne was drafted into the NFL, he once again made a bold proclamation. To be honest, I'm more motivated now than ever. Uh, there's a bigger chip on my shoulder. Lee done messed up. But this time, the statement was different than it was before. The original call was from a hungry kid willing to do anything it took to make his dream come true. But this time, it was nothing more than an empty Instagram caption. At some point in Dwayne's journey, the focus changed from balling to branding. And that is a recipe for disaster. Today, we take a look at the football journey of a promising prospect turned NFL failure. A trip down memory lane to recap his career up to this point. This is what happened to Dwayne Haskins. Cue Dwayne. Yo, real quick before we jump in, it's time to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Displate. Displate is a website that sells these dope metal posters that capture whatever your passion may be. You can get your football fixed with teen specific stuff or rep some of your favorite anime series you've watched. You put the protective paper down, then you stick the magnet to the wall. Just get them up there in the general area that the posters are gonna be, then throw the poster up. This is my second time working with Display and it won't be the last. I really like these products and I also like that the company stands for something as well. For every print you purchase, they actually plant a baby tree. So every time you cop a poster, you're also helping people. At this point, they've planted over 12 million trees and it's pretty dope that they're doing some good out here. Now, anybody that cops a poster within the first two weeks of this video dropping is going to get 30% off their first order. After that two week period, it'll drop to 15%, but you'll still save money by using my link. So if you're interested, be sure to click the link in the description. Shout out to Display once again for sponsoring. Without further ado, let's jump in. One summer, 14 years ago, middle school coach Rick Mance wrapped up a film session and headed to his car to go home for the night. But when he walked out, he heard a noise coming from the gym. As the coach creeps in, not knowing what to expect, he sees a kid playing catch with his dad. But this was no ordinary game of catch. Little dude had a cannon. The coach's mind immediately began to race. He later admitted to thinking to himself, if this kid is transferring here, I'm going to win a state championship in the next couple of years. But when he walked over to ingratiate himself with the kid's dad, he was in for a rude awakening. His new freshman phenom was only in the fourth grade. Of course, it was Dwayne Haskins Jr. and Dwayne Haskins Sr. And Sr. was quick to point out, you're looking at the number two ranked fourth grader in the country. Dwayne's dad did a lot to get his son exposure. He attended all kinds of camps and played in the USA versus the world game, had multiple trainers and QB coaches. As a fifth grader, he attended an Ohio State football camp and stated outright while wearing a number seven jersey that he was gonna go to school there. And for nearly the next 10 years, dude put in the work to see that through. His dad trained him on a weekly basis and made sure he was always on that path to greatness. When Dwayne hit high school, he moved to Potomac, Maryland for a higher competition and better exposure on the football field. And it's funny because the stories about a high school version of Dwayne Haskins sound completely different from anything we've heard since he's made it to the NFL. Back then, he was known for his work ethic and attention to detail. He used to keep the receivers after practice, sometimes for hours, trying to perfect and fine tune his game. He could send out a random group text and 20 dudes to show up to throw. He had that kind of command and respect from his peers. Back then, he exhibited all the traits you want to see in a franchise quarterback. Leadership, accountability, work ethic, and of course, talent. At any random moment, one of his coach's phones would ring and it would be Dwayne on the other end of the line. He had questions. He wanted to understand the position. He'd see some coverage on NFL Network and call his coaches to ask him about it. These are the stories you hear about franchise quarterbacks. So what I'm trying to get through to you is it's there is in there somewhere, but at some point, 
dude became disconnected from it. By the time he was a senior in high school, he was calling all of his own plays. He knew the offense back and forth and had gotten so good situationally, the coaches had given him complete control. Dwayne became a four-star recruit while throwing for over 5,000 yards and 54 touchdowns. He had initially committed to play in Maryland, but when an opportunity arose for him to fulfill a childhood prophecy, it was just too damn good to pass up. His time at Ohio State was spent surrounded by other future NFL quarterbacks. After a red shirt season in 2016, Dwayne knew then starter JT Barrett only had one year left, so he wanted to position himself as the backup so that he could take the reins the following year. But there was one other guy who had the exact same idea. That other guy was 2020 NFL Draft number one overall pick. Joe Burrow. The two had been jousting for a position in Burrow, who wasn't nearly as gifted physically but was ahead from a mental standpoint, had initially won that backup role behind JT Barrett. But when Joe Burrow broke his hand, Dwayne grabbed that spot and he never looked back. The following spring, the two duked it out to see who would be the starter. And from a physical standpoint, it was pretty damn clear. Dwayne Haskins was the clear choice. His arm talent and size were nothing short of elite. And the fact that while serving as a backup, he had led the team to a comeback victory during the previous season, Dwayne pretty easily came out on top in the competition, claiming ownership of the team and forcing Joe Burrow to transfer. So yeah, a first round pick who was just released in his second season went head to head and beat a future Heisman winning national champion number one overall pick. That go to show you just how cold Dwayne Haskins really is is the dude is gifted. Dwayne made the absolute most of the opportunity. During his long season as Ohio State starting quarterback, he broke the single season passing yards and the single season passing touchdown records for not only just Ohio State, but for the whole big team. He threw 4,800 yards and 50 touchdowns in his only season as a starter, okay? He completed 70% of his passes, only threw eight interceptions. He ended up finishing third in the Heisman vote and helped lead Ohio State state to a 13 and 1 record that went on to win the big 10 championship and the rose bowl and dwayne haskins was named mvp of both games but he definitely wasn't without his flaws when he first got to ohio state he couldn't tell you the first thing about setting protections actually something i believe he still struggled with in the nfl which led to a moment like this but in college he improved dramatically when it came to this he did not show any inability to learn or to pick up an offense and while yes i understand a college offense is a lot simpler than an nfl offense the point i'm actually trying to make is this i believe the college environment was good for Dwayne. i think it was similar to the environment created by his dad when he was growing up but urban meyer knew the nfl wasn't gonna babysit him and he said himself he didn't feel that Haskins was ready to be a franchise quarterback just yet. I think he understood two things. One, Haskins obviously had a lack of experience. He only started one year and he was a redshirt sophomore. I think he also knew that from a maturity standpoint, Haskins was not ready to lead men, which is the job of an NFL quarterback, okay? There was a time when I would use Dwayne's age as an excuse, but a quick look at other quarterbacks around the league and yeah, that excuse just doesn't hold up anymore. You can make the argument that Dwayne's recent behavior is consistent with the average 23 year old kid. I agree and that's the problem. These cats you looking at right here get paid to do the same job and to be clear, this isn't a statement on how successful their careers will be. This is a statement on how they've made the transition into the league and into manhood. They've carried themselves with a level of maturity that seems beyond their years. And honestly, that's what the job requires. But head coach Urban Meyer knew the NFL wasn't going to babysit him, which I think prompted him to say, while Haskins was one of the most talented prospects he'd ever seen and he loved the kid, he didn't feel Dwayne was quite ready to be a franchise quarterback. If only Dan Snyder was listening. Most quarterbacks with the talent of a Dwayne Haskins not getting out the top three of the NFL draft, let alone the top 10. But usually when a quarterback falls in the draft, they go to a better situation for obvious reasons, right? The higher the team is picking, generally speaking, the worse that team is. So a slip in the draft could land you with the Ravens or the Bills. But in a pretty unlucky twist of fate, Dwayne still managed to be drafted by the Washington football team. Now don't get me confused, Washington's team is actually pretty solid, but the organization is always in complete disarray and is honestly kind of a show.
For starters, the owner is Dan Snyder, a man with so many allegations that I might have to do one of these videos on him one day. His coaches at the time fought hard to not pick Dwayne with pick 15. Dan Snyder had expressed a desire to then head coach Jay Gruden to win now. And if they failed to win now, they would be fired. Then he told them, well, you know what? I know I want you to win now, but I also want you to draft a rookie quarterback who's not ready to play. Snyder was in love with the idea that a quarterback who went to high school in the area could come in and lead the franchise. His son also went to the same high school, so maybe that played into it too. After he forced the team to draft Dwayne and the coaches expressed the need for time to develop the kid, Dan Snyder wasn't trying to hear that either and pushed for him to play early, even though he clearly wasn't ready. And this is just what can happen if you drafted into a toxic situation. Now Dwayne was working with coaches who didn't want him in the first place and are under pressure to win now. So why would they be incentivized to really put everything into developing him when they got to win now and they know they probably aren't equipped to actually win now. So even if he does develop, when that time comes, they ain't gonna be there to reap the rewards. So yes, the situation Dwayne was drafted into didn't do him any favors, but even though the organization played a role and Dwayne himself played the biggest role, there is one other factor I want to discuss. The environment around him is a little weird just because his pops is very controlling on what reporters can and can't write. And look, it's his dad, so of course, he's going to be protective of his son. So maybe this is nothing, but I can't leave this out of the video altogether. So just check this out. Right before Dwayne was set to be drafted, his dad had a weird conversation with a reporter. The convo is kinda odd, so the reporter ended up releasing the full transcript online as an article itself. And while I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with the whole thing, let me just give you the breakdown. Basically, the reporter was doing a story on Dwayne for a couple of months. He'd reached out to Dwayne's dad before he reached out to anybody else, but after he didn't get a response, he went on to interview some coaches and teachers that knew Dwayne when he was a kid. As a matter of fact, I believe the story in the intro came from this same article. So it was definitely nothing negative or anything like that. It actually painted Dwayne and his dad in a great light. Now, when the reporter had the whole thing just about ready to go, he circled back to Dwayne's dad. And this time he was able to get in contact with him. But Dwayne Sr. refused to acknowledge anybody else dude had interviewed. He kept saying that none of those people were credible and everything they said was inaccurate. But this was all without even knowing what they had said. He was basically telling this reporter to throw away two months of his work. And while the reporter said he definitely would if anything he got was inaccurate, he didn't want to print an inaccurate story. Dwayne Sr. insisted that he was the only credible source and the only thing he wanted printed about his son was basically their brand or narrative, which is faith, family, and football. Any actual real thing about Dwayne was quote, inaccurate. The convo was shrouded in words like respectfully, but you know, it was pretty contentious. And this might just be a dad who's had bad experiences with the media in the past, I'm sure he has. And so now he's become incredibly defensive to make sure they're printing good stories about his son. If that's the case, I still don't think he handled this one right, but I could still definitely understand where he's coming from. But on the other hand, there could be some underlying control issues and kind of over-involved helicopter parenting going on here that could have an effect on Dwayne. But it's a little bit of a reach and it's a hell of an allegation, so I'm not ready to just jump out and say that about Mr. Dwayne Sr., but I still had to mention this because it's pretty damn interesting and it's something to consider. They're dedicated uh, in the area of, of improving with the quarterback position and just bringing in free agents. I can see them winning the Super Bowl very soon. When Dwayne was drafted, his dad predicted the Super Bowl and Dwayne declared that the league had messed up. In hindsight, it seems that we're both pretty delusional when it comes to this. Especially Dwayne, the guy who actually has something to say about whether this stuff came to pass or not. But for whatever reason, after he made it to the NFL, Dwayne just completely relaxed and became complacent. There's a couple of things I believe may have factored into this. First off, he's been catered to and told he was a star since he was a young kid. And of course, as a parent, you want to instill confidence in your kids. But I think with Dwayne, it got to a point where it was a bit unhealthy. When you insulate it in your own bubble and people always telling you how great you are, it can get to a point where you develop a sense of entitlement, which Dwayne was accused 
accused of a couple of times since he's been in Washington. Another interesting point is the fact that he's playing professional football extremely close to where he grew up playing high school football. That means there's probably a lot of childhood friends and bad influences that are kind of staying around him that shouldn't even be close. Dwayne never grasped any concept of the offense during his rookie season. It was reported that his understanding of the offense was so bad that his coaches thought he was dyslexic. I remember when that was reported and there was a ton of backlash because people felt they was picking on him, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, look, if he doesn't have a learning disability, then he gotta be able to pick up the damn playbook. The NFL is a business, and if you can't pick up the playbook as the quarterback, how the hell can you do the job that I'm paying you to do? If you can't do that, you're not gonna be there. That's just how jobs work. Again, I understand the situation with the coaches was not ideal, and Jay Gruden has been said to have one of the more difficult offenses to pick up, so I'll give him that. Rumors about his study habits began to swirl, and a lot of people were making excuses for him, but look, man, I gotta be real. I go back to the rookie quarterbacks this year. No OTAs, no real training camp. They picked it up. <laughs> like they picked their offenses up and was able to run them they've won games and hell herbert breaking records out here bro Tua seemed to pick up the offense just fine so given what i know about Dwayne haskins now and some of the decisions that he's made this year it's really hard to believe that he was doing everything he could to pick up the playbook and that's a bad sign now, when Dwayne came into his second year with a new coaching staff, it looked like things were ready to fall in place as Dwayne showed up in shape and ready to work. His new coach, Ron Rivera, didn't name him the starter and actively brought in more QB competition, but the good news was Dwayne seemed to respond well. In camp, he was working hard, completely bought in, and seemed to be ready to take that next step as a professional. He eventually won over his new coaches who were hesitant to embrace him at first, but the second he was named the starter, all the good habits that he had seemed to form went out the window immediately. He was showing up later, leaving earlier, and constantly getting outworked in the film room by Alex Smith. Dwayne gave the Washington football team no reasons to keep him. His numbers was poor, his film didn't look good, his work ethic wasn't up to par, and then on top of that, there's the lapses in judgment. November 2019 should have been a great day for Dwayne as Washington got his first win of the 2019 season, but he couldn't hold in his excitement long enough for the game to even end. And when the coaches called for the offense to go back on the field to kneel at the clock, Dude was already in the stands taking selfies with fans. Not a great look, but not a huge deal on his own. This year, when Washington got smacked by the Ravens 31-17, Dwayne's teammates were looking at him sideways when he didn't seem disappointed by the loss. He was instead heard bragging about the fact that he threw for 300 yards, which gives the impression that he cares more about his stats than team success, a bad trade in team sports in general, but when you're expected to be the leader in the ultimate team sport, Something like this could really cost you your job as it makes it damn near impossible for your teammates to get behind you. So after his 300 yard performance, Du ended up getting demoted to the third string, once again for immaturity. Injuries to the other two QBs once again led to Dwayne getting an opportunity to start. So when it come to getting opportunities, I'm not buying that he wasn't given a fair chance. I'm not buying it, I'm sorry, bro. On December 20th, he started versus the Seahawks, a game Washington lost 1520 the very next day images of Dwayne at his girlfriend's birthday party surfaced in the middle of a pandemic with his team fighting for a playoff spot there was the starting quarterback of the Washington football team in a room full of strippers with no mask violating every safety protocol that has been put in place then when you add the fact that this was his second time violating the policies this year and the fact that his coach Ron Rivera just won a public battle with cancer, it makes it completely inexcusable and really just like, bro, nobody could have thought this was a good idea. I don't care how young you are. Now, Washington was in a tough spot with all the injuries at the quarterback position, so they were still forced to start, dude, that week. I want you to think about this. After everything he did, right, after all of that, if he would have played well in that game, he'll still be on the team right now. And he'll still be on the team right now. But he played so poorly that he ended up getting benched halfway through. And a fourth string quarterback who probably just got on the active roster came in and outperformed him. Once that happened, 
Washington knew dude was expendable, so boom, they release him. Dwayne's in a bad spot because he's not starter material at this moment. And while I'm pretty sure he's going to be picked up by another team, dude's going to have to really go through the BS now because being a backup quarterback is way different than being a starter. Most backups ain't chosen because of talent. They're chosen because of dependability. And to this point in his career, Dwayne Haskins has been everything except dependable. This isn't necessarily the end for Dwayne Haskins. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure he'll get another shot with a different team. But the question is, which Dwayne Haskins is gonna show up? The hungry kid who was willing to do whatever it took or the entitled social media star who didn't take the game seriously? And yeah, it's a long shot. But if he can tap back into this energy, maybe the 23 year old could still turn it all around.